What's up and welcome back to another comparison. This is gonna be a detailed benchmark comparison between the Ryzen 9 7945HX in the Zephyrus Duo 16 and the SCAR 16 with the i9-13980HX. Now we have got a ton of CPU benchmarks and several games, I think it's like seven or eight, I games, but I think we do multiple tests in the same game with some different mode changes. Uh, I've got them all side by side edited down for you here today. And we're going to take a detailed look at the performance of the Ryzen CPU versus the Intel i9 CPU. So without further ado, let's dive into the specs of these two laptops. Both of them are 16 inches. Both of them are made uh, by Asus and both of them feature liquid metal conductinot extreme on the CPU. So if there is ever a fair-ish comparison, I feel like this is gonna be a pretty dang fair one. So without further ado, let's dive into the spec comparison, all right? So first up, we have the SCAR 16. It costs $36.99, comes with an i9-13980HX, up to 140 watts for the long power limit, 175 watts in a burst. So very high levels of wattage coming up with the SCAR 16. We've got 32 gigs of DDR5 4800 RAM, dual channel, RTX 4090 in this laptop that we tested with 150 watt base plus 25 watt boost, 16 inch QHD plus mini LED 1100 nits brightness display, though we did test it and it was a bit lower uh, in the 800 nits range. G-Sync, Advanced Optimus, two terabytes, of two one terabyte SSDs in a total of two terabytes storage in RAID 0. Uh, HDMI 2.1, Thunderbolt 4, a USB-C, both of those have power delivery. Uh, two USB-As on the right side, Ethernet port, headphone port, 90 watt hour battery in both these laptops, Wi-Fi 6E, Bluetooth 5.2, and both of them uh, have a webcam. Now, popping over to the Zephyrus Duo 16 specs, it costs $300 more. You do have two displays on this guy though, right? You've got the Ryzen 9 7945HX up to 128 watts of power in a CPU only load. I mean, the power limit is 130, but I only saw 128 watts go through the CPU at any one moment. We got 32 gigs of DDR5 4800 RAM, just like the SCAR 16. So we're trying to isolate our performance down to the CPU performance primarily. Now we had a 16 inch QHD 240 Hz uh, display, which we did test at 1018 nits brightness. The second display is a 3840 by 1100 Gorilla Glass MPP 2.0 stylus support display. So the secondary display on the Zephyrus Duo does let you use a stylus, which is really cool. We have a two terabyte SSD and an open second M.2 slot. So no RAID 0 on the Zephyrus Duo. That shouldn't affect our CPU performance tests today, though the load times may have varied and had an advantage to the SCAR 16 in the load times because of the, the RAID 0 setup. Now you get an ethernet port, headphone port, micro SD card slot. The main difference between the ports here is no Thunderbolt 4 support with the Ryzen CPU. And you've got um, the micro SD card slot on the Zephyrus Duo. So those two things. And then the other thing is the Duo 16 does have Windows Hello, where the SCAR 16 does not, when, does not support Windows Hello. So no infrared camera on the webcam. All right, so we're gonna hop into some benchmarks here. Uh, opening up, we're doing CPU Z's benchmarks, and both the the, the SCAR 16 and the Duo uh, are not undervolted at this point, and we're just getting like a raw stock benchmark. So you can see that we got 14,796 on the Duo 16. We got 14,437 on the SCAR 16. For our Intel, uh, our single thread, we got 813, and 751, 752, it's, it's finishing out this benchmark, but basically uh, th single threaded performance has an advantage for Intel still this year. Um, and we saw that pretty consistently through all the benchmarks you're gonna find. And multi-threaded performance, we saw a consistent advantage to the Ryzen 9 7945HX. Now this is without the undervolt being applied to the Ryzen chip. Well, it's really a curve optimizer, but effectively does the same thing as doing an Intel undervolt with an offset. It enhances your voltage and frequency 
across the band, boosting your clock speeds higher. Now, we went ahead and uh, went moved on to Cinebench, and we did a bunch of testing. You can see our all-core turbos for both the SCAR 16 and the Zephyrus Duo. The, uh, the Duo 16 really uh, kicked some serious tail, all right? This is stock without an undervolt right now on the Ryzen Duo 16, doing 34,475. Uh, and then the SCAR 16 with a 30 millivolt undervolt. It's a small undervolt. It's really not a very big one for an Intel i9 CPU. Uh, the, the big thing here is that now, uh, currently, things have changed. Intel, uh, sorry, Asus has updated the BIOS on the SCAR 16. Now you can undervolt it and have much better uh, potential performance. The, these tests were not done with a strong undervolt to the SCAR 16. It was just a 30 millivolt undervolt to the primary performance cores. Now that does help boost the performance on the SCAR 16 by just a bit, I don't know, a half percent or maybe 1%, uh, but it's not a massive difference. Whereas with the Ryzen Duo 16, you can see we're about to apply an undervolt with the Duo 16 and the performance was uh, uh, bonkers. It goes over 36,000 uh, with the, let me see if I can find it real quick. Um, let's see here, pop over here and pop over here and I go over here. And so with, do, 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 and MSI GE78HX and the GT7. Mute this for a second. All right, so there's a score right there, 35,963. That's an undervolted score, though. I saw over 36,000 pretty dang consistently. Let's see if we could do a, a second run here. Um, and oh, so we just go into a 10 minute test here. So uh, basically, the 10 minute run really shows the performance of multi-core render potential between these two systems. The SCAR 16, you know, it has that initial burst up to 175 watts going to 30.7K or 30.8K for Cinebench R23. Uh, and the Ryzen chip, especially when it's undervolted with the curve optimizer, it's getting 35K on a 10 minute run. That is quite a substantial difference in performance. What is that for performance gain? Let's do a quick calculation. All right, uh, so we got 30, uh, 30,792 minus 35, 63. That's a difference of 4,271. We'll divide that by 3792. And it's a 13.8% difference in performance for the Ryzen chip. So, I mean, if you're looking at raw uh, multi-core rendering as your primary workload, the Ryzen 9 7945HX is a much more powerful CPU for that performance spec. Now, when we did our single core test, look at this, we got 21, uh, 2172 for the SCAR 16 with the i9 and a 1946 with the Ryzen Duo 16. So if you're looking at, uh, if you're looking primarily for single core performance, if your applications use a lot of single core uh, performance, then the i9 is going to do better in most of those applications. Um, and so that's another very important thing to keep in mind. Uh, next up, we tested Handbrake with a 4K HEVC codec uh, render test. The Ryzen got seven minutes and 14 seconds. The Intel got eight minutes and 24 seconds. So that multi-core rendering performance lead for the Ryzen coming through in a real world test uh, with Intel coming in 15.3% slower, almost matching exactly compared to the Ryzen, uh, almost matching com exactly compared to the Cinebench R23 score that we saw earlier, right? So 
Now, we did a second test with Handbrake using Intel Quick Sync Video and the AMD equivalent, AMD VCE. I'm not sure exactly what this stands for, but basically it's AMD's equivalent of improved codec rendering speed using the AMD integrated GPU. Now, Intel was much faster at doing it, doing the test in one minute, 58 seconds versus two minutes and 38 seconds on the Ryzen. So uh, there's gonna be many applications that are gonna take advantage of Intel Quick Sync Video. So if you're a video editor, then to me, this indicates that most likely the Intel chip is gonna be your better bet as long as your video rendering software of choice supports Intel Quick Sync Video. So that's, I mean, 33% is a, is a pretty substantial difference if you're talking about massive uh, render times, if you end up rendering hundreds of hours of video over the course of a year, that's gonna save you so many hours, all right? Cinebench R20, we got 12,335 on the i9, 13,663 for the Ryzen chip. Uh, very impressive uh, difference. Now we did the OpenGL test. This is testing the RTX 4090's rendering performance. It basically was on par between the two of these, right? It's very important to recognize uh, that these, these systems are so close uh, in performance aside from their CPU. Um, now Cinebench R15 CPU test. Let's see what we get. Um, dun dun dun. 5,066 on the Intel. 5,814 on the Ryzen, with Intel being 13.2% slower. So again, about the same speed as the Cinebench R23. Uh, Geekbench 6, um, not a test that I think carries much weight, but I do it anyway, just for for the, the people that like it, I guess, is the reason why I did it. But you can see that Intel actually comes out ahead. 2,867 in single core. And even in multi-core, Intel came out ahead at 16,858 versus 15,739. So a little bit over a thousand points higher in multi-core rendering speed according to Geekbench 6, which again, I don't really think carries that much weight. Now, uh, we did also test Blender and there's a pretty dang substantial difference when you're rendering in Blender between the i9 and the Ryzen 9 7945HX. You got 219 in Monster and 262 for the Ryzen. That is a big gap in performance. 133 in Junk Shop versus 159 on the Ryzen. 100 in Classroom, 124 in classroom. So at least with classroom, you get 24% gain in performance on the Ryzen 9 7945HX. That is a very substantial gain if you're a Blender user. So if you go with Blender, if you're a Blender user, I guess I would probably recommend going with Ryzen then. Now we did do a 3D Mark Time Spy and it's very important to recognize that the Zephyrus Duo 16 when in turbo mode, the RTX 4090 is not gonna be at full wattage. Notice that right now it is doing 155 watts of power to the GPU here in TimeSpy. And TimeSpy is supposed to max out your GPU wattage. And that's why if you see, we got 21,137 on the SCAR 16 and we only got 19,963. So just a, just shy of 20K at 155 watts. Now, uh, when we run TimeSpy again in manual mode, now notice that we're doing 174 watts on the Zephyrus Duo 16. That is 175 right there. That's phenomenal wattage, all right? And that's exactly what you're looking for. So it's important to know that you get 20 more watts of GPU uh, throughput of, of wattage when you're in manual mode. And in manual mode, we actually saw an increased performance on the CPU and GPU score for the Duo 16, 21,676 versus 21,174 for the SCAR 16. Now, for CPU, times by CPU, the i9 does score higher with 16,152 versus 13,529 on the Zephyrus Duo 16. So 
That is a, a pretty substantial difference in Time Spy. Now, Time Spy does not represent all gaming performance. As a matter of fact, it's, it's not necessarily a great representation of of performance in general. Now, I do. Uh, we're going to move on to some real gameplay benchmarks. That's why. Uh, it's important to actually test real games too, not just do synthetic tests. I think synthetic tests can oftentimes give you a good idea of where performance will lie in most titles if it's a good synthetic test. But in reality, um, you really got to do a lot of tests on games if you want to see the true performance. Now, we did do Dead Space, and there is no frame generation. I just wanted to point that out. It's just DLSS on quality with ultra ray tracing. Um, this game, I actually I think it's just, I don't even know if it has ray tracing. Does Dead Space have ray tracing? I'm not sure. I, I don't think it has ray tracing. Anyway, um, the, the super interesting part about the Duo 16 is we've done a BIOS update since my initial unboxing, and... During my initial unboxing with the Duo 16, we saw 100 degrees Celsius nonstop with high amounts of wattage going through the CPU. So basically, the dead space was like pushing way too high of wattage, and it wasn't really giving us that much extra performance anyway. So uh, the new remake actually came out, uh, or sorry, the new BIOS came out on the Duo 16, and that actually did change our wattage, it dropped our wattage up from like much higher down to only in the 45, 60 range uh, for the Ryzen 9 inside of Dead Space. Now we did do this walking down the hallway test at the exact same time, right? We've got very similar drivers on these two laptops. I think, believe they're both on driver version 528.xx. I'm not sure exactly which no version it is after that, but they're very close in the driver version. So, um, I did that on purpose. I could have updated the SCAR 16, but I chose not to, to keep the them nearly identical because the Duo 16 uh, didn't support the latest driver updates. Now, the uh, notice that, that our, our performance is so dang close. And another thing I want to point out is that our Intel CPU is pulling 57, 60 watts pretty often in this test. We're in turbo fan mode right now. So our GPU, notice our GPU is not going to be pulling our full wattage on the Duo 16. And also notice our temps are pretty dang spicy on the GPU and on the CPU, even though the wattage is not that high. And that's because turbo fan mode doesn't really max out your fans on the Duo 16. Uh, whereas on the SCAR 16, our, our CPU temps are actually a bit more reasonable at 82 degrees, even though we're pulling higher wattage. And it's very important to recognize that the Ryzen chip has uh, basically, because it's on a more efficient nanometer process when it is created, the actual CPU dies themselves are smaller, so there's less surface area contact for heat to be transferred away from the CPU, which makes the, the Ryzen chip just more difficult to cool down if they're pulling the same amount of wattage. So that's one thing I really wanna be pointing out in these tests is the, the temperatures, if you'll see in Cyberpunk coming up that the, the Ryzen temps are even higher than the Intel temps if the wattage is the same. And that comes down to the CPU die. Now, GPU ultimate mode on the i9, processor is an option that you have in the armory crate of the SCAR 16. You switch it into GPU ultimate mode to disable the integrated GPU. The integrated GPU, of course, is used for things like Intel Quick Sync or maybe gaming on battery life or utilizing a more efficient battery life by turning off the NVIDIA GPU. Well, GPU ultimate mode disables that functionality and in theory, could let the Intel i9 chip run a little bit cooler and potentially have slightly higher performance. But in this game, we saw no additional frames per second by switching into GPU ultimate mode. Um, so it's kind of interesting that the performance was essentially identical with GPU ultimate mode on or off, at least in dead space. Now, Last up, we tested both laptops in manual fan mode, which of course boosts the total graphics power for the Zephyrus Duo up to the 175 watts if it's a GPU focused game. But as you can see, the performance is still basically the same. Um, the important difference here is that now that we're in manual mode, the Intel CPU is pulling a lot more wattage than it was. Now our temperatures on the i9 are still not terrible, they're not like 99 degrees Celsius, but we're pulling, look at that, the wattage pull, we're doing crazy high, basically 100 watts, uh, 90 to 100 watts on the i9 CPU, and we've got basically the same FPS, right around 105 on both of these laptops, I believe it was one FPS difference 
on these two laptops. Now, Hogwarts Legacy. We have frame generation enabled, DLSS on quality, and Hogwarts Legacy just prefers the i9, I think. It, it except for 1% lows. You'll see here in a moment, we go to Hogsmeade and the 1% lows are very good on the Zephyrus Duo. And the 1% lows, if I jump back to Dead Space, they're a little higher on the Duo 16 as well with the Ryzen. We got 30 versus 36. So that's a you know, 20% gain and 1% lows. That said, you'd be hard to visually tell the difference between 1% low of 30 and 36. It's gonna be pretty dang smooth on both of those laptops. Um, Maybe not for esports games, but still. Now, in in inside of Hogwarts here, we are getting a little bit higher one percent lows, uh, at least in this segment, and about eight percent, eight more FPS at the same time. Now, inside of Hogsmeade, it's one of the most demanding areas of the whole game because there are so many NPCs and light sources and textures. It's a very dense area of the game. We're running through here, and notice the wattage pulls on the Ryzen and Intel are very similar. Um, we got 84 watts right now on the Ryzen, 92 watts on the Intel, uh, but the the Intel chip is not, uh, you know, the Intel chip is not going to 99 degrees. The Ryzen chip here, it just it doesn't have the surface area to cool that chip down in this type of a workload when it's under a dual load because there's so many shared heat pipes in the Zephyrus Duo and in the Scar 16. Um, but especially just in general, when you when you have a shared heat pipe system and the GPU gets under load, your temperatures on the CPU tend to go up much higher than when you're under a CPU only load, considering if it's the same um, total wattage, right? So if we were in a CPU only load, 80 watts, 85 watts, that would be not that much. But when you're under a dual GPU CPU load, that's a hefty uh, wattage for the Ryzen to cool down. And I mean, this is max fans, right? So on under a dual gaming load, that's a very CPU bound game. You know, you, I would I would in general expect to see uh, the Ryzen chip struggle to stay cool, where the i9 chip. It's struggling to stay cool too, but like at least it's like, look at that, it's 90 degrees Celsius right now versus the Ryzen chip is literally bucked up against the 100 degrees Celsius thermal throttle. So uh, you could obviously taper this, tame this CPU wattage down by going into turbo mode or manually setting your power limit lower than 80 watts. You could go down to 60, 65 or something like that. So that way you're not bumping into the thermal threshold all the time, but that is gonna reduce your overall performance. And I did do a test in manual mode versus uh, versus um, turbo mode. And turbo mode, of course, does reduce your, your total graphics power, but it does also change your fan profiles and all of that. So it's not necessarily a fair test. Uh, and here's the turbo mode right now, actually. You can see we just switched over to turbo mode. And I want you to pay attention to uh, the CPU temperatures and our wattage now. So uh, in turbo mode, notice that we're only doing 51 watts to the Ryzen chip now. And look at our CPU temperature. It went down to 90 degrees Celsius. So uh, this is much more reasonable if you're going <laughs> to... If you're gonna try to play a game like Hogwarts where it is very CPU focused, then you're gonna want to, to probably either manually uh, reduce your power limits on that Ryzen chip in the Duo or just play in turbo mode where the turbo mode automatically limits the CPU to not pull more than 50, 60 watts. And I mean, you still get good performance with the Ryzen chip. It's just, uh, you know, it's, it's just, it's just not as high FPS, right? Uh, as the total, like we get 99 on the Intel i9, 94 on the Ryzen. But if uh, you can't really see it, but the 1% lows are much better on the Ryzen in this test. We were in the 40s, I think it's 46 or something like that for our 1% lows uh, versus 22 for the i9. And that's a very big difference for 1% low performance. So uh, in a sense, the Intel won the total FPS but the, the Ryzen one, the 1% lows, and that's at 51 watts, right? So, and that's also with a reduced TDP to the GPU. So the TDP reduction to the GPU might actually in, in, you know, affect the CPU performance or the, th the total FPS more than the reduction on the CPU. I don't know, it's a bit weird. It's hard to say exactly what's going on there uh, with 100% certainty. Now, 
Uh, here we are in Cyberpunk 2077. Look at our wattage and look at our CPU temps. Again, in manual mode, the Ryzen chip just goes crazy. It goes bananas. Um, and it is not possible to keep that Ryzen chip cool again because of the smaller uh, CPU contact uh, to the cooling plate and to the, to the heat pipes. It just makes it so much more difficult to cool down. So the performance we're getting from the Ryzen chip is fantastic. It is, it is very comparable to the Intel i9, but I just, I like the temperatures on the i9, especially considering, you know, we're pulling more wattage on the i9 and yet the i9 is staying cooler uh, because of the larger CPU contact. Uh, at least I believe that's the reason. Now, um, you know, even though the i9 is pulling a lot more watts here, 110 versus 78, uh, you know, the i9 is cooler and you'll see here at the end, uh, we do get more performance with the SCAR 16's i9 chip, at least in Cyberpunk 2077. So uh, notice that we got 252 on the SCAR 16 versus 244 of the Duo 16. So that's, I mean, it's not a huge gap. That's, you know, it's, but it's, it is there. And that's what the i9 pulling more wattage and at a lower temperature, at least under this dual load. All right, um, so we're gonna redo it with frame generation disabled now. All right, and notice, I, I really wish we could see our full specs right now for the CPU, but our CPU is no longer being bumped up right here with frame generation. Um, I don't think we're being pulling quite as many watts on the Ryzen chip or something, but we're not quite thermal throttling, at least non-stop anymore on this, the Ryzen Duo 16. Um, I, I don't know if that's the nature of frame gen's demand on the CPUs or exactly what's going on, but the, the simple fact is with frame gen disabled, we got a better score with the Duo 16, which could just be run to run variants, or it could be uh, the way that frame gen, uh, it, you know, 99 FPS on the SCAR 16, 103, on the Duo 16. I mean, that's, again, not a huge difference, only about a 4% difference. And that, that could be within uh, variation, right? So uh, now this, so now next up we're doing Shadow of the Tomb Raider. And I wanna point out our settings that we did. We did 1080p. So we, re, we, we under utilized our screen resolution with the focus of trying to CPU bound us. Like I believe that last test in the, I believe we did the same thing. Yeah, so notice that our cyberpunk tests were also done, right? Our cyberpunk tests were also done at 1080p. Our focus is to really try to isolate our CPU performance as much as possible. Um, that was a 1080p with ultra performance mode as well. So, um, you know, so now we're doing the same thing with the Shadow of the Tomb Raider. We're doing uh, 1080p with... So it only pops up for a second. Um, here we go. All right, I'm going to pause it when we get there. Shadow of the Tomb Raider, 1080p, DLSS on ultra performance, ray tracing on ultra. So I think we're still on the highest settings, uh, but we're on 1080p only with DLSS on ultra. So that's going to highly CPU bound us, I believe, in this game. And it's incredible that, uh, I mean, look at, our, look at our temperatures as we go through this test. Uh, you know, we're pulling very similar wattage actually between the CPUs here. Only 60 watts on the i9, 52 on the Ryzen. Our temperatures are still a little cooler on the Intel chip. Again, that CPU contact uh, allowing the Intel i9 to remain a bit cooler and at the same time push out roughly the same FPS. Uh, and the, you know, the, the smaller nanometer finish process on the Ryzen uh, just being more power efficient, uh, putting out more performance per watt, but maybe not dissipating the heat quite as well as the Intel i9. And in this scenario, uh, you know, we're doing 65 watts on the, the i9. We're doing consistently 15 to 20 more watts on the i9. And yet the i9 is also lower temperature there. 
All right. Uh, the, so in the end, though, it's like a wash in terms of performance. We ended up with almost the same performance on both of these CPUs, 187 versus 186. Next up is Warzone 2. Now, we tested this at QHD+, Plus, which is 16 uh, by 10, 2560 by 1600, minimum settings with DLSS on quality. And we, I, I actually utilized the Blade 18 for this test because we hadn't tested the SCAR 16 in Warzone at this point. And we ended up with 155 FPS on average for the Blade 18. And the Zephyrus Duo 16, uh, it got 136, 135-ish uh, after running around for several minutes. And that's in the manual fan mode with raised power limits. Look at our power limits on the Ryzen chip doing 95 watts. Uh, and on the blade, it's interesting. The blade is very efficient with how it pulls the wattage. Only doing 65 watts on the i9, 77 degrees. It's so cool on the Blade 18. The way the Blade 18 is tuned is quite a bit different than the Scar, Gar, Scar 16. And um, it's gonna. I should actually do a side-by-side -side comparison with the Blade 18 and the Scar 16 to show you how the CPU performs uh, between the two. I'm actually very curious because it, it performs so drastically different. The Blade 18 pulls much less wattage on average while still putting up equal or oftentimes better performance than the SCAR 16. And I don't know exactly the reasons why, but the performance difference and wattage pull difference is very real between the Blade 18 and the SCAR 16. Um, now I did try testing the Ryzen in turbo fan profile mode as well. So again, this lowers our TDP on the GPU and also tunes down our CPU. So we were doing 90 something watts on the Ryzen chip. Now look at us, we're doing 51 watts on the Ryzen 9 7945HX. That is much less wattage, but our temperatures are also so much better. They've been brought in line um, down into the 70s. I love that, but our, our performance also tanked. It went down like another 10, uh, 10 FPS. We were doing 130, uh, 5, 136, 137. Now we're doing 126, 127 for our, our FPS averages. So, I mean, if you're if you're after the most performance with your Ryzen chip, you're gonna want to run it at a higher wattage than just 50, and run it at a, you know 10 FPS in an esports game. That might be noticeable. I don't know. That's you know, especially in a highly competitive game like Warzone. I mean, it's not like the performance you're getting is bad at 126. That's still very good. But if you're ultra competitive. The performance we're getting on the Blade 18 is so much better, all right? It is a much better performance with the i9, and this shows you some games just run better on the Intel i9, all right? And the Warzone 2 is one of them. It's just a sad reality that you have to, uh, you know, keep in mind, all right? So um, next up, we did test CSGO, and we've got the numbers for you side by side. So... CSGO, this was tested at QHD+, plus, so 2560 by 1600 on high settings. We got 520 FPS on the SCAR 16 and 464 FPS on the Duo 16. And I want to point out that when we go through the smoke here, all right, I'm going to go back to a little right here. So we're about to turn and go into the smoke. Uh, look at our FPS averages. The i9 doing just a hair more. About the same in the middle of the smoke. The i9 just pulling just a few more FPS here and there, but overall that would be very difficult, I think, to tell a difference. Uh, so the smoke is probably the most demanding part of the CSGO benchmark. And just in general, I mean, both of these laptops are gonna perform phenomenally in CSGO, but the FPS difference is pretty substantial between the i9 and the Ryzen chip here, okay? So, I mean, we got, uh, what was it, 464 versus 520. That's not nothing, all right? That's not nothing. And so um, overall, I just, I can't help but think because of the larger CPU die in the i9 and uh, its ability to handle the dual wattage loads, at least in the SCAR 16 versus the Zephyrus Duo 16, they don't have the exact same cooling setup, but they have very similar cooling setups. And I just felt like in most games, the i9, Perf like when you let both of them off their leash and just let them push a ton of FPS and a ton of power, the i9 put out higher FPS 
pretty dang consistently, not perfectly, but pretty, pretty often the i9 was the better performer. But then you had the Ryzen pulling off better 1% lows, which is very interesting. And it may be just a nature of how Asus has tuned the i9, or maybe the i9 needs that undervolt that I have applied in the Blade 18. Um, I'm not sure, like the, there's a lot of different factors and variances here, but it's clear that, to, it's clear to me that like the games that I want to play, I feel like the i9 does a slightly better job playing those games at a, a, a little bit more reasonable temperature. But at the same time, if you're not trying to push the CPUs to the maximum, then the temperatures come down and the performance is so dang similar. In games like Dead Space, we were neck and neck. And that's a very CPU bound game. Shadow of the Tomb Raider, neck and neck. Cyberpunk 2077, so dang similar. I mean, realistically for gaming performance, most of the games were so close. There's just a handful of games. Uh, that we tested, like Warzone 2 and CSGO, where we saw big gains and big differences. Uh, so in general, I mean, I can see I can see the argument with the Ryzen's the better choice, given that it has better 1% lows and that the overall FPS difference is really not that big of a difference to even notice. And at the same time, I can see the counter argument saying, well, the Intel i9 can handle more wattage being pushed through it, and it had higher FPS average in general, so that would be the better choice. But it, it's, I think it's kind of, um, I think it's kind of a mute point in that both of these CPUs put out great gaming performance. And so when it comes to actually picking between these CPUs, it's almost like you should focus more on uh, pricing. Which, which CPU can you get in the laptop that you would love uh, for a better bargain, for a better deal? because the gaming performance is so dang close that it probably doesn't matter that much whether you're chugging in a Ryzen uh, or you're plugging in an i9, you're gonna get great FPS in almost all titles in both CPUs. Uh, the, big, the big thing though is there's certain titles like Warzone where the difference in performance is pretty dang substantial, right? We were, we, you know, at the end there, we were seeing Warzone 2, if, if both CPUs were pulling like around 60 watts, the, the i9 was doing like 25 to 30 more FPS, which that is a huge gap in performance. Um, so uh, if you're a Warzone 2 player, that's kind of the only exception so far that I've found in games. The i9 just crushes the Ryzen in that game, but almost all of the other games, it's like it's a toss up or maybe the Ryzen wins because of the better 1% lows um, or maybe the, the Intel wins because it has t higher total FPS. So. Yeah, now in terms of multi-core rendering performance, we definitely saw Ryzen take the cake there. We saw substantial gains overall for the Ryzen chip. Now, I do feel like uh, that because the Ryzen chip was undervolted in most of the multi-core tests, that the Ryzen chip had a kind of an unfair advantage that the SCAR 16 couldn't really be fully undervolted the way the Ryzen chip could. So uh, I, I really would say that most of these comparison tests that I had in the multi-core rendering section were more, um, you know, Intel with a, a minor undervolt and Ryzen with a hefty undervolt. And if you really want a, a more apples to apples comparison for multi-core performance, you really got to see what a rise, uh, what an Intel with a hefty undervolt can do with the same high levels of power limits like what we have in the GT77. So I would be very interested to do an additional side-by-side -side comparison between maybe something like the GT77 and the Ryzen 9 7945HX. Maybe we should do a, a follow-up stream and do more testing because we really didn't see a clear winner in this first SCAR 16 versus Duo 16, at least in terms of gaming and in terms of multi-core rendering, I do still think that the Ryzen is going to win, even if you have an i9 multi-core. Uh, sorry, if you, even if you have the i9 fully undervolted to the max, it's. I still think the the advantage is going to go to Ryzen in that that raw CPU performance, with the exception of applications that can take advantage of Intel Quick Sync Video or iGPU um, enhanced encoding. Those are the areas where I think. Uh, both laptops are gonna still be good, but the Intel one is a clear winner being 33% faster in handbrake. So uh, you really got to take, um, when, you're, when you're comparing these chips, here are the facts. Both of them are insanely fast. 
It's it's you're, it's hard to go wrong necessarily. And so um, if one of them is like a thousand dollars more and the other one's like a thousand dollars less, then the one that costs a thousand dollars less is going to be the better one for you, basically guaranteed. All right, between these two. Now, if if uh, I mean not guaranteed, and I mean you also have to have good power. Level. Assuming they both have good cooling solutions and can go to reasonable levels of performance, then yeah, the, take the one that's cheaper. Um, if you're if all you're after is after the best performance, but let's the fact is that most people, uh, when you go to buy a laptop, they care more about like, does it have Windows Hello? Does it have the right display? Does it have the right GPU? Uh, what's the thermal cooling solution like? What's the keyboard, the mouse, the trackpad? What are the ports like? All of those things matter a lot too. And so because there's the performance between the Ryzen and the i9 is so dang similar, um, you know, when you look at like comparing the SCAR 16 versus the SCAR 17, which has a Ryzen chip, the SCAR 16 has such a better display that it makes it so the SCAR 17 is really not that attractive of an option to go for, right? And, and the same thing's true of the SCAR 18. The SCAR 18 has a better display than the 17, but the SCAR 16 has an even better display than the 18. So, I mean, anyway, I don't want to get too in, into the weeds there, but basically what I'm, what I'm pointing out is that when you compare the Ryzen versus i9 performance, you got to look mainly, I think, at what features does the laptop actually come with? And then which things do you value more, right? Um, maybe you're a Warzone 2 player, then get an i9. But for the most part, most players, they're not gonna really see a visual difference between the Ryzen and the i9 chip um, for most games, I don't think. Like in terms of total FPS, maybe in terms of 1% lows, the Ryzen would have a small advantage there. Um, yeah, that's kind of my thoughts right now on the whole Intel versus i9. Get the one that's cheaper or get the laptop that has the better features and don't focus so much on the Intel versus Ryzen debate because it's kind of moot in between these two. And I believe neither of these laptops as well. I just want to talk about battery life for a moment. I believe both of these laptops are gonna be in the same ballpark of battery life. The Ryzen might be just a hair ahead, might not be. Uh, you will have to find out in my upcoming battery life battle royale that I'm gonna be doing. It's gonna be very interesting. I'm gonna try doing a battery life test with a bunch of different laptops all at the same time and see which laptops survive the longest. It's gonna be a very long live stream, but also very interesting, I think. Um, and uh, yeah, so uh, in, in the end, can I recommend the Ryzen over the Intel? Maybe, if you need raw CPU, multi-core rendering performance and that's your focus, that's a great option. But in the end, it's a small difference in performance. And if the difference in, maybe you, you do Intel Quick Sync video because you're a video editor, then that probably outweighs the multi-core rendering performance. And if you need something that's on battery life, then you really gotta go with a, a CPU that has less cores so that you can be more battery uh, efficient. So the new Phoenix chips from Ryzen should be very interesting. Um, I believe they're only eight cores and they're made with a lower nanometer process as well. So they should be much more power efficient. And uh, that's gonna be, I think the battery life king for 2023. But these 16 core AMD CPUs, they're not really the battery life king. Um, and in, in the end, I just get the laptop that has the right features and is at the right price point and that's in stock. And right now, a lot of Intel laptops are in stock and the Ryzen laptops are just really hard to get. Um, and I think that's because of AMD just not providing as many chips to manufacturers to actually create the laptops. But we'll have to see as we go through this year, maybe there'll be more in AMD laptops available. Anyway, those are my thoughts on Intel i9 13980HX versus Ryzen 9 7945HX. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Let me know in the comments down below. Uh, that's it for this overview comparison. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, be sure to subscribe if you don't want to miss out on future live streams, comparisons, and analysis videos. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'll see you in the next one. Brandon out. Huzzah.